So long as everybody keeps their voice down, relatively calm, so no, no being excited. We're going to talk about the critical cost of overdrive magazines. Okay. Cool. We have people here. We actually have people in the room. Yay. Oh, my I'm going to leave that up as a problem for future teeth. What is that? Oh, the secretary, do I need to take the minutes? I believe that that is a yes, Vanessa. Yeah. We will have the recording, but you still need to take minutes. <laughs> Yay. Do it. Play the same as figure out the first is here. Steer. Why she stand up there? I don't know who one seven oh seven two zero six. Are you reading what's going on in the chat? There is nothing going on in the chat. Because the camera just four. went out and sent four messages. Oh, I believe it says that. Yeah, we have one minute. I feel like that needs to be bad now. I think one of the five. That's the next plan. Okay. Is that less awful? Okay. All right. Fantastic. See you then. Okay. Very similar seventeen oh six by four. Two. That's 
Well, we don't have a chair left, so. It's your voice. Yeah, no, it's, it'll do it with everyone. Yeah. I think we should have brought portable speaker. Then we won't be able to hear our presenters. Even though I can't nominate anything, you are putting me. All right, I'll call you the Um, The agenda. Approval of the agenda. Comments for you on the agenda. Those who approve the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Second. Okay, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Approval of minutes from the last meeting. We follow a lot of principles that are referred in the uh, bylaws of the That's right, exactly. Um, are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor approving the minutes say aye. 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 All opposed? The minutes are approved. State Library report. Cool. Uh, all I really have to report uh, today is it's been a, a run uh, with our book club. Um, our turnkey book club will run through October 29th. The last title, uh, I can't remember now, but it's very appropriate. Uh, it was something like Hoping to Forget, which I thought was somewhat poignant for the book club. Uh, 
So that is our fifth and final book. Uh, so uh, thanks to everybody who uh, support the book club. Uh, I'm going to just read things. Uh, Chris Taylor Jenkins writes Truth Dot Com. Uh, Matt Gates wrote All That Matters, and then this year in the book club. Finished business. Okay. Uh, so, at our last meeting, we had talked about, um, we had looked at uh, a budget, you know, a bunch of money that we had reallocated. Uh, I keep saying reallocated, really reallocated. Uh, in 2020, we had reallocated a bunch of evergreen money from uh, non digital resources to digital resources just so that we could use some of that money during the pandemic and we wouldn't be holding some of it either. Uh, and so this year we kind of looked down uh, at a, a, a budget that was uh, more or less us coming to play Serpent's Truth, of which some of the services we subscribe to we hate. Uh, so one of the difficulties we were having is we looked at that. Enough now, Julia. I can I can say the Pledge of Allegiance until you have just enough of a game a little better. <laughs> Okay, what if I speak now? How awful is that? Much better? Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Love me. So I'm just going to have to deal with the uh, hearing my voice on like a half second delay, like a speech jammer. So we can, we can power through this. Uh, so we were kind of trying to figure out how we would deal with a situation where we have uh, essentially two databases that we wanted to keep and not enough money for them. Um, it looked like the plan was to uh, drop Chilton. Uh, we did touch base with Gail and they were willing to come down on the price of the, uh, the renewal price of both databases from uh, $57,000, uh, was it? No, God. Uh, no, that's not the right numbers. I don't have the right numbers in front of me, silly. Uh, from $57,000 to $49,000. So they had dropped a little over 10%. Uh, and so if we uh, reallocate some money from our hosting line item budget, uh, that will allow us to keep both uh, Chilton auto manuals and the other one whose name I can't remember right now. Gail legal forms, thank you. Uh, and so I am just looking for a recommendation from the uh, e-content committee to be able to take that to the executive committee so that we can make that reallocation happen. So that would be a reallocating $18,000 from uh, our hosting line item that we're not currently using this year to uh, e-content. I'm not sure that Um, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. If, if anybody has any discussion there or excitement, don't get too excited so we don't get feedback. <laughs> so, 
I, I will say, you know, once we are looking at those, it's a process and uh, getting. Does this kind of sound like tragedy out in the Zoom world? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so, and doing a discussion, and I think that we've talked about this in the um, content committee as well, that $40 per access, um, which sounds pretty high. Uh, but at the same time, if we're talking about that access as opposed to um, users going to a lawyer, it, it's a significant savings for them. Uh, and then for Shelton, it was um, the other, I don't remember offhand. I'm kind of just going by memory. It's, uh, there you go. Oh, get legal forms. Per use actually significantly less at $23 per use. For children is at $34 per use. And so using those to think about uh, keeping them, despite the high cost per use, um, the consensus was in not just from the Evergreen Indian. Uh, Indian team that they were worth keeping at least for another year, both of them. That's kind of what brought us done to this point today. And then keep negotiating with uh, John at Gale to get that subscription cost down even more. Okay, I'm back to my own mic here. Make sure that I can be heard. Okay, uh, it, it is as Ruth said. Um, John is uh, Gail has been he's been good to us. Um, ha with a year of stats behind us, we can we can kind of get a full view of what the cost per use is uh, for these databases. Um, they're okay. Um, we might want to kind of keep in the back pocket that. Uh, legal forms is performing a lot better in terms of cost per use than um, Chilton Library is. So we may revisit this next year and decide to uh, keep one or the other. And Gale Legal Forms looks like it's kind of um, in the front runner. But for now, at least we can hold on to both. All right. And that's all I have on that point here, unless there's any other discussion questions. And then can you say one more time what the nego the new negotiated rate for both of them is? Yes, let me get the negotiated rate. It is. Uh, forty nine thousand six hundred thirty seven dollars is the is the newly negotiated rate down from I believe fifty four thousand that's for both for both databases correct mm -hmm. forty nine thousand six hundred thirty seven I see there's a question, but I can't read it from here. Sorry. New rate for now. Oh, lovely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Cool. All right. That is all I have to say on that point then. All right. Uh, actually, we have one more 
do we want to talk about <laughs> we can talk about overdrive magazine renewal and uh oh sorry new business right yes lovely okay so yes let's hold off on the overdrive uh more excitingly, uh, we have today with us from Library IQ, uh, Steve Kaufman and Patricia Crosby. Uh, I sat through the uh, demonstration of Library IQ, and if I had to describe it in about one sentence, uh, it is a library analytics, collection development, and long-range planning tool. Uh, and, but I will now turn the floor over to Steve and Patricia, and they can tell me all the ways that I am wrong and that that description is insufficient. Uh, so I'm going to mute myself and uh, Steve and uh, Patricia, are you there? We are. Yeah. Uh, yeah and can, can you hear us? <laughs> uh, Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there were nods, Steve, so it looks like yes. Just one. There we go. Okay. Can, uh, can, can, can you hear me? <laughs> There is nodding. <laughs> All right. All right. There, there is not because <laughs> the audio's the audio's been a little iffy. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, you could you could pick us up. All right. First place. Thanks for um, uh, to Keith for inviting us. And actually, you did a great job describing the platform. Let me share my screen, and I'll give you first place. Typically, this demo goes for about an hour. What we want to do this in about 15 minutes, so it's really going to be whirlwind and the highlights, okay? Um, but feel free to stop at any point and ask questions. So the, the real uh, purpose of Library IQ is to kind of give you a library management dashboard that allows you to use to make it easier for you to use data to manage your library, okay? And it's got a lot of different pieces to it, but the the, the ma one major piece is collections, okay? And it starts here with the collection action plan. And what you can see is um, your this year's, you can see a chart that gives you this year's CERC versus last year's CERC. And then we measure three key elements of collection performance. No circ in three, which is an indicator of potential need to weed your collection. Dead on arrival, which is new material you're adding to your collection that has not circed, okay? And then relative use, which is an indicator of whether you need to, in, to, de to increase the size of a particular collection or decrease the size of a particular collection. And just to show you how that works, if the collection is balanced, then that number is one. The relative use number is one. If you and now I'm going to switch it. So we're looking at one section of the collection. I'm going to look at the children's collection right here. And as you can tell, that number goes up to 1.78. All right. That means that the children's collection could use more material for the uh, for the amount of circuit generating. If I look at the adult collection it drops down to 0.763, which indicates that the adult collection may be a little too large for the amount of circuits generating. So there are various ways to solve that uh, uh, problem. Um, you can reallocate budget from one collection to another. The other thing is you can take a look at your debt on arrival here because it, for the adult collection, for example, that's saying that about 30% of the material you're adding to the adult collection is not circulating. So that's an area where by improving collection decisions, you can actually improve the way that that collection is working. Now, this is the dashboard. What we do and instead, I mean, there's a lot of data here and there's a ton of tools that are underneath this dashboard that help you kind of figure out how your collection is performing. So I can look down here and I can look by collection code and I get those same kind of KPIs that we were using up there in the, um, in the action plan down here. So I can analyze it, you know, ex exactly how each of my collection areas is performing. So there is DOA on each of the collection areas. There is that relative use number that we were talking about, and then there, there is the potential need to weed that no circ in three for each of the collection areas. 
If I want more detail, I can take a look at my collection by Dewey going right down to Dewey ones. And I can take a look at my collection by BISAC category, which is a bookstore classification system. So I can see, for example, how my fiction collection is behaving. So uh, here I've been able to break down my, the, my fiction collection by the bookstore categories, suspense, literary, mystery, detective, women's fiction, mystery, historical fiction, thrillers, etc. cetera. So all broken down by BISAC category. So what happens when uh, we, we work with about 300 different libraries, when we uh, get your data flowing into IQ, then our collection management staff get together with you, review the data and help you develop action plans for that particular collection. And so the action plans consist of setting targets for those KPIs that you know that you want. So for example, looking at this library, their current uh, no circ and three value is 19%. They, they want it to be 10%. Their debt on arrival is 30%. They want it to be 10%. Their relative use for adult uh, collection is 0.76. They want it to be one. And then down here, under the actual action items. These are the things that they want to do with their collection over the course of the next year to try and improve those numbers, right? The no circ and three, done on arrival and relative use. Uh, okay, now, any questions at this point? I mean, that's basically looking at how your collection performs and setting targets on it, and then developing action items that help you meet those targets. And like I said, you work with our staff to develop those action items. I mean, I'll, you choose what you want, but we'll help you interpret the data. That's the important thing. And, and any questions at this point? Okay, so there's a lot of additional detail in here, but since this is the electronic collections sub, uh, committee here. What I want to do is show you a little bit of what we're doing in the electronic media area, because what you're looking at here, unless this library is checking out physical material from their catalog or, or electronic material from their catalog, you don't, you wouldn't see your electronic circ in here. In front of words, if people are going to Libby to check things out, or if they're going directly to Hoopla or whichever electronic services you're using. So to capture that element of it, we have a whole section on electronic collections. And this is just to give you a taste of what's here. There's actually about 25 different charts that we use to track this area. The first one is what percentage of your current collection is, or your current circulation is electronic. So there it's 35.91 for this particular library, which is actually pretty high. Most everybody that I've looked at now is varying between about 10 and 20%, depending on the library. So this one is extraordinarily high, but that's not all. This compare, this chart here compares your electronic to your physical search and what you can see is, what, remember, all of us have just gone through COVID. So as this library was closed, the electronic circ and physical circ, I mean, was closed or just open for like curbside pickup. The electronic and physical circ kind of uh, moved along, actually electronic just about equal physical circ, but then when the library started to reopen, you can see that physical circ started to take off while electronic actually dips a little bit. So that's the way it looks for this particular library, right? Another kind of chart we show is physical versus electronic shirt by age group, okay? So this is for adults and this is for young adults and this is for children. So you can get an idea of just exactly what, what age groups are taking advantage of your electronic collections versus your physical collections. And remember when I say electronic collections, this is anything that has a circulation period. So if it's overdrive, Hoopla, Canopy, Cloud Library, anything that has a circ period that we're counting in this area. And then you can get 12, you can, you can get electronic versus uh, physical circ by format. So here's books, 
versus, I mean, and write books. Here's audio books, and you notice that audio for electronic has overtaken the physical side quite significantly there. There's video, so forth. So like I said, only a few of about 25 charts that we use to track electronic collection performance. All right, so moving quickly from there, then we have a whole, we have a variety of selection tools and this basically allows, well, let's take a look and I'll show you how they work. Here we have um, various curated lists and these could be bestseller lists like you see here, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, New York Times, but they also could be diversity lists. So this is a diverse family list that is um, uh, done by the University of Central Florida. And what they do is track diverse books. If you have those books, then your, these items are, are blue. If you don't have them, they're orange. So it's an, a way to, number one, allow you to evaluate diversity in your collection and also to see if there are additional titles you might want to buy. And by the way, detail on any of these titles anywhere in the system is available simply by clicking on the title and bringing up the, the cover art and typically the publisher's blurb on the thing as well. Um, so there's that whole approach we can apply that we're looking at for uh, comparing the bestsellers and curated list. We can do the same thing for forthcoming books if you're using uh, on order records in your catalog. We can do it for major authors in your collection. So if you want to see which of Jane Patterson's things you have and which ones you're missing, you can click in there and find out that's everything James Patterson has that's in print. And you can see what, what, what titles you have, what you don't, and what you don't. Same situation for series, okay? So if I take a look, you're looking at the Four Dummies series, I can tell which of the Four Dummies titles I have and which ones I don't. But the same thing also applies to numbered series, which uh, you know, solves a perennial problem with uh, with libraries trying to figure out whether they you know actually have a complete series or they might be missing you know numbers three, four, and seven or whatever. Okay. So in addition to that, we have a weeding tool that allows you to in the first place develop a weeding list and then do weeding and inventory at the same time by scanning your collections using high-speed scanners that, uh, we, that we've uh, worked with Honeywell to develop. And uh, what that means is you can develop a weeding list, scan your, and scan all of the items in a particular collection. The, the scanner will tell you which one is a potential weed. And when you've done with the, when, you know, with the scanning, whether it's the entire building or just a particular collection, you've got a complete inventory of that collection and where it's everything you've identified, everything that's supposed to be on the shelf and you will have weeded it at the same time. And typically just to give you an idea of how quickly that can go, four or five staff scanning uh, can handle a collection of say about 100,000 within four to five days worth of work. And um, so and at the end of that, you would have a completely weeded collection Plus, you would also have a full inventory of that. The other, all right, so another area that we work in is patrons, because so far we've talked about collection and use and the rest of it, but of course the people actually doing the borrowing are important. So one of the things that we do is put all of your patrons on a map. And so what you're looking at here is the patrons for this library. <laughs> Second, my fingers are not behaving this morning. And I start out at about 60,000 feet, okay, but I can get right down to swimming pool level um, on these and see exactly who in your service area you're, you know, is a patron and who's not. And in addition to that, we provide demographic data on these patrons. So for example, every one of these purple lines is a census tract. When I click on that, on that census tract, what I get is demographic data on the census tract, including how many people live there and how many you're serving. 
and then a lot of detail on income, population, housing, and other things. All of this from the U.S. Census and updated every two years. Then in addition to that, and in this particular library, they have not cleaned out their patron base. Uh, they actually are serving more patrons than uh, are in their, in their service area. So that's 69,000 people in their service area. They have 98,000 patrons, but that's because they haven't cleaned it out, which is points one thing is important, and that is, you know, it's, if you have garbage in, can be garbage out. So it's something that identifies a problem right now with this particular library where they'll want to clean up that patron base. We also track the which of those patrons have actually been active in the last 12 months, and that's what you can see here. So even though they're serving 98,000, their number of active patrons is actually much smaller uh, than that. And then, so, so far we've looked at collections, we looked at patrons. There's a whole area here of metrics. Now these are the standard kind of library metrics that you report to, um, you know, you put in your state report, right? And hope, and you also probably track for your board reports and the rest of it. So let me, show, what, what you're looking at right here is library visits. But if I open up this section, what you can see is all of the different areas that we track. So if I wanna see reference collections and I can look at it year over year as well as just one long, so I can get it to move there. So this is looking at reference collections year over year. I can look at volunteer hours, all of these things. If the library, if these are the various elements that we make available for tracking. If the library wants to track them, then they enter data in these areas, right? And that allows you to not only keep track on a monthly basis of these kind of key output measures like library visits, uh, but it also allows you at the end of the year to, to basically press a button and get the annual data for your state report as well. So here's, you know, just to give you an example of all the different elements that are available for tracking here, here is programs. So I can look at preschool programs in attendance and so forth, okay. And then last but not least, I remember I said this is whirlwind. So the other thing that we offer is a complete acquisition system. So if you're still doing acquisitions by basically using the vendor catalog database and, um, and Excel basically to track your spending, what you have here is a complete acquisition system that you can take advantage of. And what that, the way that works is you still continue to do your selection and the rest of it in the vendor catalog, just as you do now. But when you're ready to order that title, you transfer it to our staff, which are in each of the major vendor catalogs. I was talking about Baker and Taylor, Ingram, Brodart, Midwest Tape. And then we place that order using an electronic system and it, it it automatically encumbers your funds, it deducts funds, so you can always, as those books are shipped, you can always tell exactly, you know, how much money you have in particular funds. And then the other thing is you get, instead of paying multiple invoices to multiple vendors, you get one invoice a month with line item detail for everything that you bought from all the different vendors. So you're writing one check and not having to track a whole bunch of you know, detailed invoice line items and, and keep track of things in Excel the way many libraries still have to. Okay, so what? So basically a pretty, the idea, like I said, is to try and, and have a library management platform that allows you to track kind of the key performance elements easily. And, and you know, so you can see it at, directly in front of your face, as we see with the action plans, and then um, and then coupled with people to help you analyze and interpret that data and decide what you want to do about it. So that's kind of a, a very brief overview. So any questions at this point? 
And Steve, we've been having a, a lively chat as well while you've been um, going through this. So that's okay, really good. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. is, is there anything that we can that we can answer out of that, Patricia? I haven't been watching that. So. No, that's okay. Yep. No, some really right. good um, questions. Some some good just pointers about the things that you know they wanted to take a look at regarding um, you know planning and vendor discounts. Um, the acquisitions and cataloging with the additional service, but of course we always take that into consideration with you know price, you know, pricing and that all that kind of stuff. So those are always, you know, variables. Yeah. So I mean, the idea we, we we know that in Evergreen as well as in most ILSs, it's, it's really difficult to get good information out, and and obviously in for this particular program, you're looking at information from a lot of different sources, not just from the ILS too. So it's information you enter, it's information on your electronic collections that we gather and integrate it into one place and then you know make it easy to interpret and decide what you want to do about it. So that's the that's the that's the kind of critical piece of this and old Peter Drucker once said you can't manage what you don't measure and so the concept behind IQ is to allow you to measure and that way you can manage it that's that's the hopefully the takeaway here <clears throat> so any questions that we can answer for anybody Nothing in the chat, nothing on any faces. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, okay, you all. Uh, uh, Keith, and then we're happy, you know, obviously, we're happy to, um, we're happy to get into further detail if anybody is interested, you know, with any library who might be interested. Kind of muting myself here, risking terrible feedback. Yeah, right. I get it. I remember you were dealing with that earlier. So. <laughs> Thank you, Steve and Patricia. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Very good, Keith. And good luck on the audio, okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll talk with you all shortly. Thanks a bunch for having us, okay? Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Yep. My nap. All right, we're, we're back in black here. Can everyone hear okay? Outstanding. Uh, I, I have a problem. Matthew, do you mind turning those speakers on? Okay. Thanks everybody for your patience here uh, while we deal with audio issues here. I hope everybody has uh, some nice like earplugs. Um, maybe rub some, go listen to some soothing music here to repair your, your busted eardrums. Um, we do have uh, one more item here uh, in our new business section. Um, we got some, I would say, surprise news. Um, I spoke to our overdrive contact, uh, Elise, who claims that at the, the end of the year, she said, uh, and notice was sent out that overdrive magazines would be increasing in price. Um, overdrive has uh, moved to 
they, they now have one single magazine package called the Zinio All In package uh, that offers 3,000 titles. It is now their only magazine offering that they have. Uh, it is simultaneous use for those 3,000 titles, but it has increased the annual cost for ECDI uh, from 18,000, uh, sorry, not ECDI, EIDC from $18,000 a year to $45,000 a year. Um, so that's- and We've seen those titles in the catalog already, which has actually been a bit of a downside. Um, I don't know if, if your uh, customers or patrons have complained. I've heard it actually at the state library where it's hard to actually read through to get to the popular titles now. Yeah, a bunch of stuff there. And, and I don't remember the representative's name. Well, Elise Allen is her Elise, name. Um, it's very possible that, that that email did come out in December, um, which was that weird transition period between um, to me to the end of the year to Keith and um, as well and those things. So um, the chatter of it all. So, part of the issue, um, there were a lot of foreign magazines out there having companies are using the language about a month ago. It's cutting off all comments and discussion. So the the real thing we've got is uh, that's essentially going to be I, our renewal date for that. I believe is August twenty fourth. Is that what the um, agenda says? August twenty fourth is when our subscription runs out. Uh, so we would need to renew. Uh, prior to that date, if we want to. Can you put the agenda back up on the shared screen? Yes, I can. Thank you. It's really annoying that Zoom will not let me minimize while I'm hosting the meeting, but this too shall pass. There we go. So I guess the, the question is, is uh, how do we feel about a 250% increase uh, in the cost of Overdrive magazines? It's, it, and the way the invoicing works is it is a, it's a, like a tiered payment system. So uh, the, the larger libraries by service population. It, it, yeah, it follows the tiers exactly as the membership as rates. Membership rates does, okay. I think it's just based off of population size instead of the budget, but roughly the same. There's like nine tiers. Yeah. Yes, so all of the libraries that are participating in the, in Matthew, I feel like I'm speaking when I should be speaking. Um, all of the libraries that participate in the EIDC, the uh, periodicals subscription is apportioned out based on the population tiers. Um, it's, it's one invoice that comes to Evergreen, Indiana, and then if Indiana is reimbursed. Each individual library is invoiced. 
Jackson County did, I'm sure, um, and probably some others chipped in extra because there were some smaller libraries that had concerns about even paying, mm -hmm. you know, an amount, and so the larger libraries would cover that. It all went, it, yeah, it was, so each library is not built individually, although there was like a recommended amount that they pay, okay. it all went through the state library, and I know that, I know that we paid more than our, our share. But. Which was still cheaper than our Yeah, so yeah, it was still, it was still a part of it. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. So until Midwest State gets them, I'm kind of stuck in overdrive. Right. And I will switch to Midwest State. <laughs> Absolutely. And so I guess a, a question that I have is Has there been a conversation with, with Hoopla about their plan as far as periodicals go? Not to my knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. but, but their licenses, of course, are probably tied up with. Yeah, we know that Hoopla is moving towards a consortium wide platform for um, for ebooks and e audiobooks, much like Overdrive offers. Uh, I do not know what their status on magazines is currently. Uh, Julia makes a, a good point, and thank you being here and I'm sorry you have to leave. They might be stoned if you don't offer online magazines. And this is something that's happened in the library. Because electronic magazines were honestly easier to deal with than physical magazines in favor of this and now hitched to this course. And Careening toward a cliff. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Right, only digital version. So, so I mean, like I said, I overdrive is eaten up every other company. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other option for magazines, unfortunately. Right. And that doesn't mean that I really want to pay twenty thousand dollars for things that are digital for fifty titles. Right. So. In the first year, the two thousand plus magazines I had checked out on Overdrive mm -hmm. justifies that that two point five increase. Mm -hmm. So that would be the big question: is what sort of? Um, I don't have statistics offhand to see for what sort of circulation those magazines see. Um, if they're if they're getting a lot of use, then it might very well be worth the cost, um, especially since. Folks are cutting back on their physical collections to rely upon those that digital content and that digital content. There is a lot of it. I mean, it may not be, you know, not everybody may be interested in the German version of People magazine, but you know, there are three thousand titles out there. I think that it it could have been significantly more palatable if rather than an email in December, there was significantly more promotion of it. A positive thing because it's the same for all. Uh, Indiana Digital Download Center is the, the same way, and they're also freaking out because obviously 2.5. Percent increase that they were really anticipating is the same for everybody. Kind of stinks. Yeah. At least it doesn't kind of stink. Yeah, we were just we, we we first learned about it literally a week ago, I think, when yeah we were approached by the I some yeah the by that consortium, not by Overdrive. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't. But, what I was thinking, kind of leading into this, not very eloquently or elegantly, it's, it's 
seems like there might need to be some type of survey survey sent out to the EIDC to kind of engage all of the members in terms of this and to eat that increase and kind of figuring out um, like looks like the overdrive consortium I think is probably a nice step uh, to see what practically to do in terms of continuity of service and then also paying for continuity of service. I can't do that, but I mean, I survey, but I don't know what it'll say or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, everybody has access to it, but everybody may not know how to run those reports. I was kind of just playing with the part yesterday. Everybody had to look for 200 in the last year. Twenty-one thousand three thirty-five, and I quit plugging them in after two hundred. Mm -hmm. I was like, "That's a good amount of libraries." That are getting at least two hundred searches a year. That's probably twenty-five thirty libraries. The highest being two thousand three hundred forty in a year. Is it possible to get a breakdown of search for libraries so that I can compile a spreadsheet and then yeah. okay, if we have that report, I can I can put that together and then send it out to libraries so I can say this is what how many times digital library digital magazines search at your library, this is what your cost would be. So this would be the cost Are you per really able to pull that. Yes, you want uh, for library search of magazines. For a year if possible, yeah. That would be helpful. And then if we if we can make a, I don't know what the breakdown would be for each uh, level of library, um, but if we could send that along as well and just say, are you willing to pay this? Yeah. And then knowing that hopefully some other libraries will be able to pay a little bit more to cover any. Cover any difference, yeah, the balance there, yeah. Ew. Yep. Not exciting. Thank you. Yep. All right. Are there any other discussions, questions there? And I, I know that Julie had to leave, but after we finish this point, we may want to revisit the library IQ now that we have the room and yeah. can talk behind people's backs, even though it's recorded. That maybe somebody may have some questions or comments about that. Yeah, their pricing, I, I tried to get a, a ballpark idea about their pricing. And the only thing that they would mention is that it's based on um, operating budget. So I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, um, Julia mentioned that it was very similar. It seemed uh, a lot of the functionality seemed to overlap with Collection HQ um, from uh, Barnes and Nobles, Baker and Taylor. Um, that is a service that I have heard of, but not used, and I'm not terribly familiar with. Um, really, the only significant difference I saw was the integration with electronic resources and being able to look at those side by side, the physical and the electronic resources, also the demographic thing, but that kind of makes me like, super easy to get yourself done. it is, it is. No, it's just a convenience thing. Going back a little, did we need a motion to recommend to the EC that we move 18,000 from the hosting line item and budget to the e-contact? Who says no? I don't think that we need to have a vote for that. I think that, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not in charge, but from, from 
it's a budget thing, so it's technically. I, I think that it, more than anything, to say that it was discussed, it's already been established. Um, and we're talking about you know, game products, right? Hilton and platforms. Yeah, it, 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 to continue on with it. So, yeah, that was the discussion in the last meeting. Yeah. Yep. So if anybody really Does wanted want to, to not do that, uh, oh. <laughs> please, please more of it. That was more of an informational yeah. thing for y'all was saying this is what we're going to do with the budget. So. We're going with overdrive as a, as a consortium offering. Yeah, and they'll not every that, that's the downside is that because not every because it's I don't feel super great about consortium money that's essentially levied from all member libraries only going to 100 of our 129. Um, as much as I would probably like that. No, I know <laughs> there would be libraries of those 29 that are not members yeah. of the CIDC that would have that. Yeah, it, it's the yes, almost yeah, within like a thousand dollars or two. Yeah, yeah. That is substantially higher than I would have guessed. Apparently, magazines are still being both published and checked out by people. I don't know. Honestly, that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I would say as part of the overdrive and um, perhaps to go back is that I do know that we have some libraries that have significant Chinese language, Mandarin or Cantonese, and if those are, if there's a, a, an ability to turn those on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, specifically by title if you want certain magazines that are available in Chinese or whatever. Um, and then we can turn those on or turn on the Chinese magazine. Okay. So there's a lot of granularity in what magazines yeah. literally down to we don't want to display this particular magazine title to our patrons or we do want to display this one title. Yeah. Maybe maybe pick some top five languages, maybe Spanish. Mandarin, Korean, um, something like that. That's obviously not five languages. Oh, English. Yeah. We have that. yeah. Bonus. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Any further discussion on? New business, library IQ, or uh, Overdrive magazines? For library IQ, do any of your libraries use Evergreen acquisitions module? Yep. Uh, she might be she may have muted the audio. Hold on, Susan. Hold on, Susan. We, we've got the room in here muted for some reason. Feedback, most likely. Because she needs to come through the speakers. Yeah, yeah, turn volume on the panel on. Greens acquisitions module already. The answer is yes. Mayfield. Um, I'm trying to think. Don't use 
specifically come to mind, but there are uses, acquisitions. Um, and we are hoping to roll out some training by the end of the year once we go to the next um, upgrade that will have several of the new uh, interfaces that are a little bit more intuitive. So I uh, feel a little bit more confident about hopefully bringing some more people on to use acquisitions. Yeah. And that was one of the things about the library IQ uh, presentation that I noticed, I mean, having done a lot of work in the development of those interfaces for Evergreen, it sounded like, well, why would we pay for something like that? Just as a little um, to get it set up um, in terms of how you want it to work for your library. So, can you conceptual work in the Evergreen acquisitions model? Can you order titles directly through Evergreen? Uh, yeah, so, yes, you can. EDI, yeah, EDI, accounts okay, so which you Taylor or Ingram or whoever. Depending on how you want to do it, um, if you use something like Title Source 360, you probably don't want to order it just because Title Source 360 is what you're paying. You cannot. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So I guess that would have the comparison there, wouldn't it, between electronic and yeah. I'm assuming Collection HQ is just a, it's kind of the established. It was one of the, the the first real collection development tools that that came out full featured. Um, I don't know that it's really the, all that old, like five, seven years. I don't know. Time wise, I don't remember everything anymore. I usually think something happened two years ago and then I add five years to that to be closer to accurate. Um, yeah, I think it was closer to 2014, 2015 that I set it up. So it may have been that far back. That is one thing that I checked on. It's a certain vendor who has been around for years and years and years and years and years and years spreadsheet files that we've set up to do that. Um, and I did like that it looked like 
a much easier to use version of analytics on demand in terms of that patron data stuff because analytics on demand was absurdly hard to actually try to use and it was very expensive also yeah i've used analytics on demand and i hated the thing i had to have a whole bunch of notes to just try to do them but, um, I have to imagine that this probably builds on the engine or a similar engine as that, but they put the bulk of their work towards the interface. Um, so, which is a little complicated. They definitely like the um, subject stuff because, you know, diversity, collection, audits. Yep. Is, can be very convoluted. Yep. So that was a very helpful feature for her. I'm not sure Steve went into it. They also have a way to tell at a glance. Um, you may have series information, so you can just yeah. take a look real quick and see what series you have, uh, which books you're missing out of the series, essentially, so you can see at a glance. Oh, okay, we've got, you know, we're missing book three of Harry Potter again. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's what we use every week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's, feature, you know, but yeah. that's, that's the other thing. That was the other thing. Your library doesn't have these titles. Well, this is an amazing thing. Um, I think that just from again having zeros in this game, but, but wanting the library to be fun, we need pricing at all. Yeah. Yeah. Something realistic and. <laughs> It's like, yeah, whether it be like some type of pool or discount, however, we have several ways that we do um, funding for things in the consortium. So, so those options would be the. So that's my next step. Then um, I'll reach out to them and say, you know, you know there's. It's cool. So it's, it's it, there's, there's some potential interest, but we need we need that. Show, show, show me the money. Can we can we can we get it cheaper for being a member of consortium? Yeah, he, there was a comment made, and I, I think it was in chat that um, they they are around like forty eight percent, and but it had like zero context. I mean, for for group discounts, it's like well, that, that was for their um, so that was for their acquisitions. So they have uh, oh, so they get the one like yeah. Baker and Taylor and Ingram. So yeah. if you're ordering, if you get their acquisitions service and you order materials through Library IQ, there is a you get a discount for ordering materials. You get a discount anyway. Yeah. Those, Those are jobbers. jobbers. That's the point of going through Jobber. Is you're getting wholesale costs. They're not going to get a below wholesale. That's, That's a, a nice number. number. That they threw out there to people that know. Yeah, because I'm sitting here thinking about last time I ordered materials back in Taylor, which has been I mean, it's standard to get 40% off about two years. Yeah. Of, anyway, I mean, it depends. It was between 40 and, no. 40 and 45% on average. Yeah. Okay. Well, so it actually does nothing. All right. And it, was, it was a fun number to throw out. <laughs> The fact that the acquisitions and cataloging is a additional add-on feature when everybody already has those features seems right. As a say, you have a little feature ILS that does. Well, I don't know why. I mean, someone, someone who has used acquisitions and can look at that and look, can, can tell me where the, the advantage is, but I am not that Why don't you bring it to that? Meeting then is going to be at 10 a.m. Uh, on our 
October the 12th. Uh, we're just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna throw the location at the TPD out there again, just because we just don't know what the landscape is gonna be like in, uh, in a couple months. Uh, we hope that. Those doesn't get this one out of the other group, but um, we're just gonna have to play it by ear and see what happens. Um, is it okay if we go ahead and book the, the rooms here again, Matt, just in case here? Yeah, because if we, if we wait, there's a chance that we'll be available if we need them. So I'm gonna book it, but okay. if we end up canceling, uh, it's not a problem. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, that is all the things that I have to say. I can't, I can't remember if we need a motion to or not. What would Robert say? I move we adjourn. Second. Matt, do we adjourn? Second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Same sign. No one opposes. If anyone has opposed, please put it. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for putting up with the. Uh, Sounds you to uh, help us test and do this out for uh, our community meeting this afternoon. So it's a uh, good discussion today. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Well, yeah, I'm leaving mine on so we can do this.